Hello and welcome to the Southbound Sports Show. I'm your host, Richie Leahy, here with my co-host, Maddie B. I feel like every week I tell you, hey, it's summer, you know, slow period, I don't have much to talk about, and then I end up talking, you, you get me fired up about something, and I end up <laughs> ranting for like 20 minutes, but we'll see how it goes today. We're going to stick with some NFL, we're going to do some quick hitters, we haven't done these in a while, going to go over some of the big headlines, don't really have much to say on some of these, uh, so we'll see how it goes. The first one that I've been talking about going in for a while now, Baker Mayfield ends up at Carolina. I have to feel like it's such a Browns move to bring a guy in, mess up your entire locker room. Then they they have to trade Baker after they tried to keep him. He kind of gave him the ultimatum. And then the Browns were like, well, he's immature for our locker room anyway. And then they tried to throw him under the bus by leaking some stuff after the fact. I'm like, if he was such a big problem, why didn't you leak that before? You know, I know maybe they were trying to prop up his trade value, but you have to think that that's a steal, right? They gave, they got him for a late round pick. It was what, a fifth round? Yeah. And they're paying half his salary. But I think like with that fifth round pick, it it's conditional that based off of performance and then they could go to like a four or something along those lines. It doesn't matter. You still win. Like, they're paying half his salary. So it's like, hey, we got a guy. Um, I feel bad for Sam Darnold. I've never been high on him, though. Uh, no, no ill will against the guy. I just don't think he has what it takes to be a premier starter. He could have a long career as a backup. I mean, look at Chad Henney, right? So people are saying, well, they're going to battle it out for the starting spot. I don't think necessarily that's a bad thing. Because last year, it kind of worked out having Cam Newton come off the bench for a couple of games. Maybe having Darnold there, I don't know if he's ever going to make that jump. And typically when you get that first first round salary, it's pretty much over. You're not going to have a long career. Uh, but I honestly think Baker's going to win it. I know some fans have reached out saying that I'm wrong on Baker's talent. He's not as talented as Watson. Okay, great. Like, we'll, we'll see. We will see what happens because I don't know how you can put all your eggs in the basket of a guy that has... Missed an entire season, is going to miss more than that, and you're expecting him to come in and perform at a high level when you had a guy that has been doing well and has been your best quarterback in a long time. Since what, Bernie Kozlar? Like, that's how long it's been. Or Vinny Testaverde. Yeah. Forever. So, like, you're going to be like, okay, we better get rid of this guy because we might be able to get a better performance out of this other guy that hasn't played. So... Browns move, if I've ever seen one. Uh, Kind of a Browns move, (laughs) not really. The Steelers, man. Ben Roethlisberger spoke out against it today. Heinz Field is no more. So the sponsorship ran out. We were just joking about this because NC State, was it their football stadium? Or was it basketball? NC State just had one of their stadiums named for only $5 million. And I was thinking, like, it's only $5 million. People are throwing $9 million at some of these quarterbacks for NIL. Why wouldn't a Tar Heel kind of just come in and try to name the stadium? Like, I don't <laughs> think a team I don't think a team would be like, yeah, we're going to turn that money down. Like, hey, I'm going to double it, but I want it to be... Uh, we're, gonna, we're here at uh, NC State's Tar Heel Stadium. Like, that would just be hilarious to me. And you would have to think that some fan, like, some fan could be able to do that. Just as a whim, like, hey, I don't have any kids. I'm going to die. When I die, I want you to name my rival state team after where I went to school. I think that'd be a good <laughs> burn. Uh, Pittsburgh, they sold it to a Michigan, what was it? I think a Michigan law firm or something. I don't even know what it, what they are. I don't even know how to say it. Akristu? Akrisher? Akrisher, maybe? Stadium? <laughs> I, I, the, the best one I saw was just called Aquashore. <laughs> Because I, I looked at it and I was like, I don't even know. I'm going to ignore this on the show. Maybe Matt will talk about it. And then I'm like, I asked you before the show. I'm like, I don't even know how to say it. So I'm just going to wing it. And I'm, I'm probably going to be wrong with it. I only Because I only wanted to put it out because Ben had made a statement about it. And Ben's right. Everyone has been referencing it as Heinz Field. It's not like it had a different name. You know, where some of the namings, like they, it's just like Wrigley Field. I don't think, does Wrigley still pay? Like, that was named after Wrigley Gum, right? So if they ever renamed that, 
at, at some point, what would they do? Like you would, you would just think like the Steelers would be like, "Hey, you're pretty much a mainstay. Hines is still around, right?" They're like, "Nope, got to get that money." Sorry, guys, we had history with you. Uh, we're going to risk the curse and we're going to rename the stadium. But you know they're they're renaming and they're making a gazillion dollars on it. So bully to them. Yeah, what did they say? How much is it going to be? The original deal was worth $57 million, though, Matt. Money well spent, right? How many people that didn't even know what Heinz Ketchup was knew the stadium and at least the name? But guess what? How many people now know that AquaSure? <laughs> <laughs> we don't even know how to say it. Guess and, we, we, we know what it is. We, we know that they're naming the stadium, though. They've just for whatever, whatever they're going to pay, they've gotten. They've gotten more exposure for their company than they ever would have anywhere yeah. else. And it, I was wrong. It's not a law firm. It's an insurance broker. So if they keep going and they keep growing, they say that they're a top 10 insurance broker. I've seen enough sports commercials to know that insurance companies are everywhere and I've never heard of them. So maybe they are top 10. I don't know. Uh, but I can only imagine the other commercials that they're going to be throwing out there, like competing with Geico and Allstate and all of them, right? Unless an insurance broker is something different than an insurance company that I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. I wish they would just... They should come up with a different name. And it should just be something local. But you got to get that money, I guess. Anything to do that. Uh, let's see what else happened. Oh, Dan Snyder. He has to be open to subpoenas, right? So they're going to try to do... The House is going to have a committee that's going to make him kind of testify... I'm I'm glad that they're doing that because they don't have anything else better to do right now. I know. I every time there's sports stuff in the government and people are like, "Hey, vote for me," and because you know you get those ads just coming up, the midterm elections or whatever. And I don't even really care about politics that much, and I hate talking about it on the show. But you get the ads, and it's always the worst because it'll be like, "Hey, remember whenever I did this?" And it's like we investigated baseball steroids, and it's like I would never vote for that. Like, I do not want to spend any government money at all. I hate when they subsidize stadiums. I definitely don't want you wasting money and government time investigating which baseball dudes are on steroids. Right? Like, that has nothing to do. Like, Dan Snyder has... If it's going to be a criminal case, great. Make it a criminal case. Put it on, like, Judge Judy's channel, Court TV or something, and let the people watch it. Don't spend government time on it. Right? Why is the House having a committee on this? Aren't they supposed to be like the legislature group? Yes. Yeah, it has nothing to do. Put it to court. Um, break up the NFL as a monopoly, whatever you need to do. But that's just annoying. Um, let's see what else. Speaking of off the field stuff, Le'Veon Bell is only focusing on boxing, Matt. He announced he's not coming back this season. Did you think he even had a chance? <laughs> what are you laughing at? <laughs> He's only focusing on boxing now? Yeah. He's not going to play in the NFL this year. Because I had, I mean, uh, everyone had like prop bets on who's Le'Veon Bell going to play for, right? I've never seen well, one. Never seen one. Well, there you go. That... I, I, I thought that he, when he washed out of the Chiefs, was it last or was it the Ravens? I can't even remember now at this point. I, I assumed he was done anyway. But at least he got his name out there and said, no, I'm doing boxing. And honestly, boxing could use it, right? Boxing needs popularity. I, someone was arguing with me the other day because um, I was trying to get thoughts. Because I like to reach out, like talk to some friends and say, like, hey, you're a fan of this team. What do you think of like realignment or whatever? People are like, oh, it's going to be just like boxing. And I'm like, bro, you're like 30. How, how do you know when boxing disappeared? Like everyone talked about it being the glory days in like the 20s. You weren't alive for that. You remember like Tyson Holyfield. Those were already pay-per-view shows anyway. And they were still successful. So, like, what do you mean boxing's been dead since the 20s? Like, wasn't Muhammad Ali after that anyway? Yeah. Boxing died because people don't know who the guys are anymore. Everyone knows Tyson. Everyone loves him. Everyone knows when he's punching dudes on a plane that they want him to not go to jail, right? That's because everyone knows Tyson. You throw boxing guys up now, there are so many different things. Like, I think atten attention spans are shorter because of social media they need to cut weight classes or do whatever they need to do to promote these guys. Like I look at UFC and it's like, Hey, this guy has three different weight belts at the same time. It's like, then cut those weight groups. If one dude can win them all, then only have one, right? <laughs> the, 
the less you have for me to watch, the better. Like Conor McGregor, oh, everyone knows him. People hate him. Whatever. Anderson Silva, people knew him. And it's like, well, now we have uh, 45 fights this Friday. And it's like, all right, well, who am I supposed to know? Because it changes all the time, and then you don't know. And then whenever, like, Conor McGregor loses a bunch, people are like, I washed up. Well, it's like, well, who's better than him? And they're like, well, we don't know who to promote now. And then they don't promote anybody. So that's why I think boxing and UFC, if they can take advantage of, like, getting these other athletes in, they have to win, though. But they can't just come in and be a ringer. Well, like, they like could, Rock, they remember when Rocky boxed uh, Hulk Hogan in the ring? <laughs> like, great, great pay per view bout. But I'm just saying, like, people know that that was like a weird thing for them to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> you need big name guys, Matt. Rocky, Muhammad Ali, Mike Tyson. That's all I'm saying. Thunder lips. <laughs> Mr. T, great boxer. So, I don't know. What do you think? You think Le'Veon Bell's going to win? I don't know. He's fighting Adrian I, Peterson. I, just, I said I'm giving the edge to P- AP. I know, we did talk about this last time. But I just wanted to bring it up again because he said that he's only do- focusing on boxing. As if... <laughs> He better because AP's going to cave his head in. <laughs> he needed that excuse. They said AP's 37, and Le'Veon Bell's only 30. And AP's been playing a lot longer than him. So you'd have to uh, think, like, maybe is it going to be the guy that had the longer career, or is he going to be too broken down? I don't know. Uh, I would say probably not, because he spent a, AP spent part of his career rehabbing ACL injuries, so it wasn't like he had that much wear and tear. Pretty much true. He did have a. He has to be high on the list, though, of rushing. I feel like he was for what? Touchdowns, maybe? I thought he was closing in on a couple records when he played last because I remember cheering for him. And then he, like, barely touched the ball. And I was like, why am I watching this? (laughs) It's not like my man Barry Bonds came back and was like, I'm going to try to hit five more homers or something, which he probably could do. Right? Pools is still going. They just don't want Barry back. You can't tell me that if the NL, they were like doing the DH thing now, right? Or is that wrong? I thought they were doing all DH now. Yeah. So if Barry Bonds came to Pittsburgh and said, hey, guys, I need one more year. He's coaching. Who cares? You can't be a player coach? Pete Rose, he was like gambling and coaching. And now he can't get in the hall. Yeah, exactly. You can do both. Barry Bonds could be in there. He's like the third base coach, and he sees his team's down, and he's like bases loaded. He's like, all right, I'm tagging myself in. And he just goes, takes a few warm-up swings. Like, that'd be pretty funny. I'd love it. Pittsburgh would start going, Barry, Barry. Because he's not blacklisted, right? When you coach, you can still go back and play. I don't think there's a rule against it. It's not like, what's he going to do? They're going to be like, Barry, we need you to like out the single here. You're going to come in, you're going to be bunting. No, he's only going to be hitting the ball. So he doesn't need to run barely. He can jog around the bases. I want to see him come back. How he can't be that old, right? Um. Well, he was born in '64. However old that makes someone. Why doesn't it tell me all the time? It tries to make me do math. He's Fifty-eight. Fi- oh yeah, he's fifty something. Damn. So maybe it won't work. But I still think he could hit the ball, right? Or do your eyes just stop working after a certain time? He could be the oldest guy to hit a home run. He could be. The Pirates would not turn him down. The stadium's like empty. They have are they dead last? Yeah, they would. Because with with what they'd have to pay him for the vet minimum, he'd be the highest paid player on the team. But do they have to pay him if he's also the coach? Yes, he's not going to just work work for free. No, they just pay him the coach salary. He tags himself in and hits the ball. They have to pay him twice. Just get get all pissed off. Hulk rage. Get out of here. I'll pinch it. <laughs> I would love to see it. I thought he was only 40-something. I thought he was like 49. Damn it. I'm 10 years off. The time is flying. Collecting on Social Security. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Oh, Henry Ruggs. Speaking of, I should have brought this up with Dan Snyder. Uh, they, they ruled that they could use his blood alcohol test against him. 
in his case where he was, you know, drunk driving, which I'm, you would think that that would have already been established, right? Like, I, I would just, feel, I feel bad for the other people that were involved. Like, wasn't there like a death in that too? And like, you see the guy trying to get out of it. Uh, just sat all around. Like, I can't believe, like, I don't know if he's trying to get back to the league, but the NFL has such an optics problem with Deshaun Watson right now that I don't think they can take Henry Ruggs back. (laughs) But that's just me. Yeah, I would say probably not. Another off-the-field thing that kind of struck as crazy to me, Marion Barber, which I'm surprised a lot of people knew who who he was. I knew him from Minnesota. Because, damn, he was, like, part of that great punch that they had. Um, who was the other guy? There was two of them. It was Marion Barber and... Um, was it Maroney? Yeah, was it Maroney at the same time? It was around there. I know they had a couple different guys. Um, and they were just going crazy. And then um, he played for the Cowboys for a bit. I remember him kind of washing out. He played a lot longer than what I thought. Uh, but that's when uh, they announced that he died recently. He was only, what, 38? And they released the details. He had his house thermostat set to heat at 91 degrees with the bathtub faucet running to create a sauna condition while he worked out. He died of heat stroke. Ooh, that's a that's a tough way to pass. So in the summer, man, like you, I feel like if it were me, I would have to have a place to go and relax. And maybe he just didn't have that at this point, where he had another like a uh, a gym that he could join or something that would give him that. I mean, I I don't think if he went to like a gym and they had a sauna, and he's like, yeah, I'm gonna work out in here. I think that'd kind of be weird about it, but. You never know. Um, but that's going to be something that I think is just crazy. Like That's going to be one of the craziest ex-player deaths. Uh, the one thing that, that stood out to me, they are, said that they're not going to uh, test him for CTE. And I almost wonder, like, because they, they said, I saw a recent study where they said that CTE changes the brain in the way you think. So, like, it, it's not like it's like damaging it so bad that like you you're unrecoverable you know but people like i I don't know if it makes cloudy their decisions if it's making you lose iq points i don't know so i want to see more from a study like that and i think looking at guys like this where questionable situation right what's going to happen from that um but we'll see because now they're talking about it as like a heat stroke and if people don't read the story they're going to think, like, oh, is he just working out outside too much? Like, did he go on a long run and it got hotter than he expected on the way back through? So I hate when they do that. Because, uh, like, the, the headline, Matt, is Marion Barber's death brings the dangers of heat stroke to the forefront. It's like, no, Marion Barber set his house to 91 degrees heat. <laughs> <laughs> like, and, then, and coaches every year have to take their heat stroke test yeah that, that's one of the mandatory gotta haves because matt this is what annoys me and why i brought up the cte in their article there's a heading why are football players at risk football practices especially in the preseason take place during the hottest part of the year Hit, barber's death had nothing to do with football right no he's not even playing he's working out in his house so that's what annoys me because they take it, they twist it, make it political against football or whatever you want to call it. And it's just insane how the article where it's like, hey, he died of heat stroke. How can we make this against football when in reality it had nothing to do with it? And I liked Barber, and you're right, it was Lawrence Maroney um, with Minnesota. Uh, what did they say? They, didn't they run all over Michigan? Uh, this article doesn't really say, but they both had over a thousand yards. Um, this this article, of course, is a pre uh, a preview of the Michigan Minnesota game, so it doesn't tell me who won. 
But I want to say that they had a hell of a year and where they were just both running all over everybody. Uh, I can't remember what year that was. It was early 2000s, but um, that's the one thing. And then, of course, they have other stats in here where 11 football players have died from heat stroke related activity, uh, 68 over the last 25 years. But it doesn't tell me, like, are they counting this as a football one? Because otherwise, why is that stat in the article? You know? Like, do a separate article, but don't tie them together. Um, I feel bad for the guy. Because now, like, his... Where you should be remembering his playing career. They, they're not even... They don't even, like, mention how good he was or anything. It just says, he retired from the NFL in 2011. But his death brings to mind instances of other players that died of heat stroke on the football field. Like, thanks, guys. Thanks. I remember Marion Barber's being pretty good. You would think that you'd give him a shout out, you know, honor him a little bit better. But that's just me. Um, let's see. Anything else for the NFL you had? I know I just had quick hitters today. No, I, I really didn't have a whole lot with the NFL other than I was I was truly surprised to see Baker went to Carolina just because with them already it seemed like they were they were invested in having uh Darnold and drafting Corral that I would that they're like hedging themselves to have this three headed quarterback battle. But the one thing for me is it's kind of different because being down here I view this as different than the Eagles situation. I was, I've been very critical of the Eagles quarterback situation over the years where they went with Wentz. The coach was like, no, we don't want Wentz. And they're like, well, he won the Super Bowl. And they're like, no, he didn't. He, Foles won the Super Bowl. And they were like, well, we are already paying him as a, like he did win the Super Bowl. Keep him. The coach leaves because he's like, I, I'm not dealing with this. They bring in a new coach, and they're like, well, we're hiring you to, to hang out with Wentz. He shows up, and that coach is like, we got to get rid of Wentz. He's awful. And then they're like, okay, well, now we'll finally listen to you because we can't get a coach to work with the guy. It's the, the opposite of the Panthers where Matt Rule, they were kind of like, were we going to push him out? What are we going to do with him? He's saying, like, Darnold is not the guy. I'm willing to bring back Cam Newton and see if he can provide a spark because – Darnold's not able to run my offense. So now there were rumors about him. Is he going to jump to Michigan? Is he going to do something else? Like he's been begging for college jobs. What's going to happen? I almost wonder with the NIL stuff, would Matt Rule have embraced it at Michigan? And would Michigan not be in a situation? They're very similar to Florida right now, which we'll we'll get into a little bit later in the show. But it's almost like, hey, they're not all in. Harbaugh doesn't know what to do. Like, But what would happen with Matt Rule? He seems to be focused on his offense. He's telling the Panthers, like, hey, bring in Baker Mayfield. I think he can make my offense work. That's why, to me, the Panthers are going to say, like, hey, we're behind you. And a lot of times the the team comes out and says, hey, we're behind the coach. The coach normally gets fired, right? People are able to see right (laughs) through that. Here they're like, hey, we're behind you. What do you need? And he's like, I need to not coach Sam Darnold, right? (laughs) <laughs> that's like reading between the lines and so they're like well what do you need uh, Baker Mayfield and, and so then the Panthers have been leaking this out the whole time like no we're, we still want Baker like we told Matt Roll he's our guy he, we need Baker to come in here and see if we can get this to work because we think his offense is going to be like the next big thing like look at Cliff, Cliff Kingsbury right he wanted Kyler Murray some people weren't so high on him He's like more of a baseball guy. ESPN was even write, writing articles about should Kyler Murray like play baseball and stuff. Uh, he's not that big. He gets there. That's the guy he wanted. And I remember thinking like I'm not really high on Kingsbury after his like college offense. I didn't think it was that good. He got his guy. He's made it work. So you have to kind of respect him for that. But what if the Cardinals would have been like, nah, he's too small. You know, they very easily could have done that. So I think this is another situation. I think this is closer to the Cardinals than what the Eagles did, and I wonder if it's going to work out for them. We'll see. I like Baker. I, I like that he's down at the hometown team because like, this is one of the free games each week that I get to watch the Panthers. And you know that McCaffrey's completely on my nerves and he never even plays. <laughs> so, so at least I can watch Baker. And he's not even immature. Like, they're mad because he was, like, asking about 
uh, they well, one of the articles said that he asked about a running back contract. Like, I don't remember that. I didn't look it up to see what he said. But it's like, yo, he's a young guy. What, what do you want him to say? Like, Ben Roethlisberger had off-the-field issues. Looking back to people be like, oh, he was really immature. Like, Steelers really hated him. Like, no. Water under the bridge, right? But that was that was one of the issues with Le'Veon Bell, that he was trying, when he was having his contract issues with Pittsburgh, he was trying to argue that he wasn't, he should be getting paid at a higher rate because of his wide receiver abilities because he was factored hev- heavily in the passing game and was trying to leverage for more money. So I think like that was kind of a similar way that McCaffrey was was trying was trying to make that argument. I'll I'll put it in Bell's favor though. The Steelers were winning with him. Once he left, they had no chance at winning a Super Bowl. Everyone saw it. Like Ben was down. He didn't have a guy that he could just flip the ball to out of the backfield and help him move the move the team down the field. The Panthers, on the other hand, McCaffrey's been great, but he's barely played at all, right? Over two past the past two years, he's barely played at all. I don't know what you would be thinking to say, like, oh, that's a guy, like he has high talent, we're gonna overpay for him. It's like, no, he's getting older every year. Like he's closer to being a nope, he's out of there type guy and i almost wonder too like is it because like he's so athletic and stuff is he overworking it is it because he's taking like so many supplements that he can't handle it like he's dehydrated and like he's easily pulling muscles i don't know like because i almost wonder at some point like some guys get injured it feels like all the time is it just bad genetics right but like thinking with the way genetics work and like pay everyone talks about evolution and stuff you, why would you your body evolve to a point where, hey, we're going to make you super athletic where you can like hunt and stuff for survival, but you're also going to get hurt all the time, right? <laughs> I feel like that's just unnatural. Like, I don't know. Like me, I I mean, I, I had knee surgery once, but it was just a scope. I, like, I've never, I've played all kinds of sports. I've never really been like, yeah, I'm really injured all the time. Like I would have to do something like, Super crazy to like get injured. I know some injuries are like freak, like broken bones and stuff, but like that's not McCaffrey's, right? Isn't he like always straining muscles and stuff? Yeah. And it's like, like the one he like came up limp after like pulling a hammy on a normal run where he was like galloping like a deer. It's like, dude, don't do that. Like if you can't, if your body can't handle it, why are you doing that? I don't get it. So that's my, I'm not going to beef on McCaffrey anymore. This, I'll probably bring it up during the season throughout it because watch him go crazy this year and not get hurt at all. I'll probably reverse jinx him and Baker Mayfield will win, <laughs> win the Super Bowl, Carolina. <laughs> that would be insane if that happened. That would never happen. That would be a crazy burn. <laughs> write that down. Yeah. Yeah. McCaffrey listens to the show and he hates it so much. He's been like, I'm going to stay healthy this year and I'm going to win the Super Bowl with Baker. <laughs> Carolina I, I fans, the, hey Carolina fans, man, would have the best show in the in the state. Then they'd be tuning in and be like, "Look at this guy; he's willing us to Super Bowl." Baker was trying to pitch to Progressive, moving out of the Brown Stadium, but they vetoed that. Uh, that would have been a great commercial. <laughs> I would have loved it. See, that's why I like Baker. Funny, he's already doing all those stupid commercials, and he's like, "Hey, this is a great idea." And guess what? It is a great great idea, and better than most commercials that are out there. Um, let's see. Oh, I got some other random updates from, from non-sports. Um, Malkin from non-football, I mean, Malkin said he's going to test free agency, leaving the Pittsburgh Penguins after they signed Latang, which would pretty much lock him up for career. Did we bring that up last week? I can't remember. I know I sent it to you. Yeah. And I don't know. Last week, I think we were all on realignment, but I'm think here. I'm thinking like, are they going to be able to keep everyone together? And then Malkin's like, nah. Like, sorry, guys. But the, it's interesting to see because it, it's being released that they offered him a four-year deal, and his agent people were like, no, we never got anything like that. So I, I don't know if it's – they're trying to save face because Pittsburgh's making a realistic offer to him to try to keep that core group together for the rest of their careers. I, that's what I would think. Like, I, I mean, you never see this in sports where a team 
keeps the guys. Normal, typically, a team that has hit the peak where they won a couple Super Bowls or Stanley Cups or whatever, they have to try to recycle and find a new core to build around, right? And it's like you see, like LeBron realizing that in the NBA, and that's why he jumps teams so much. <clears throat> He's like, this core got its run. It's easier for me to jump to a new team than to try to rebuild it here. Golden State has brought new guys in, you know, letting Durant go, bringing him into the core. Uh, And then with Pittsburgh, it's like, now we have the guys. Are we going to be able to keep them entirely through their careers? Because Pittsburgh's a sports town. They like the guys, right? They want guys that they can look back and say, that's a Pittsburgh guy. We love him. He played at Pittsburgh all the time. That was our guy. And not a lot of teams have that. Like Chipper Jones with the Braves, like that's one rare one, right? Yeah. I mean, you look at some of the other teams, it's like, Tom Glavin, why'd you go to the Mets? You idiot. You idiot. Why did you go there? We hate the Mets. Like Greg Maddox, like, why did you go? Where'd he go? I don't even know where he went. I mean, he was with the Cubs first anyway, wasn't he? Yeah. That's like, why are you guys leaving? Don't do that to yourself. That's kind of what the Pittsburgh Pirates remind me of. Like, just get old. You didn't really win um, that many championships in the Braves. Um, part of it but like for the Penguins like you did win just go out on top who cares Pittsburgh won't care and then while you're there they already got some bets <sighs> then you invest in the draft and have them learn from like the legends and maybe you can have the next group come up and be that next b- great Penguins core so I hope he finds a way to come back but the way like you said some of the agent stuff I just feel like he's gone He's he's the most frustrating to me though I think. What was like there are certain stretches where like he played like crap and would would draw a lot of penalties or like drop penalties at bad times, but it always seemed like when when we needed him in the playoffs he played well. That's true, and that's with, with the playoffs and stuff. It's almost like is that the guy we're going to get? But you never really knew if you were going to get him or not. But it was like I almost felt like there were a lot of times where he had to step up because teams were just bashing Crosby and Crosby was getting knocked out of the playoffs too. So like he was kind of forced into some of those situations. To, you have to, you have to carry the team because the captains back out on IR. That's very true. Uh, but we'll see what happens. I mean, off season's still going. Uh, we'll bring we'll loop that back in once we get a better sense. Um, but. I would hate to see the Penguins kind of just have... I mean, maybe it will help them re- rebuild, though, without him. And then you're kind of like... Remember Yager? <laughs> he played for like 100 years. For however many different teams, because he left. <laughs> uh, I did bring yeah. up the Braves. The Braves traded... And I only bring this up just to see how absurd it is for uh, sports trades, because like everyone's like, hey, these guys are really valued. The Braves traded three prospects are like three minor leaguers for only the 35th pick not even a first round pick like how crappy do you have to feel if you're one of those three guys and you're like hey we're trading you and you're like oh okay what are you guys getting like a first round like nah just like a 35 and you're like (laughs) wait are these like you're just taking a gamble at this point baseball has how many rounds in the draft that like, you're not getting any guaranteed value other than, like, once you're past the top 10, just like the NBA. But could you imagine the NBA, they trade, like, three dudes for, like, a 30-round pick or 30th pick? Like, that would just be a slap in your face, I think. And they're, like, they're trying to spin it, and they're, like, well, it's tradable because it's a competitive balance pick. So the And this is what I brought up for because the Pirates always annoy me with this kind of stuff. So... They're going to give the Braves a bonus pool for this. So now they have more than $10 million um, available because this, this move gives them $2 million extra dollars in like cap room or whatever. So they went from having the 19th most available to the 9th most available money. So they're really saying, like, you three guys are so bad. We just need more money. Like, we don't care. We don't care what we get at this 35th pick. And that's why, like, the Braves thing is kind of like a joke. Not the Braves. In Major League Baseball as a whole, I mean. Like, their salary cap system is such a joke. Like, could you imagine if, like, the Browns were like, hey, we just lost Baker Mayfield, we have to pay half a salary. Let's just trade three dudes 
for a mid-round pick, and then we'll get some cap room back. I mean, they could really do that, but they just don't have enough minor league spots to really eat up roster spots, right? I wonder, because they went to the Royals. Like, are the Royals eating this up? <laughs> Probably not. Just just trade away knowing you're making up some cap space. The funny part is these guys were like, at one point, one of them was a top 100 prospect, but he's like been stuck at AAA because he hasn't been able to, to like, you know, perform there. And they're like, well, we're going to give him to you now. <laughs> like, we've tried. It didn't work. So, like, let's go. You're out. You're out. That's all I have to say. Um, just different sports. Um, same with, like, the Celtics because they were in the finals, you know. So I saw that they're they're trying to bring in um, guys from Italy to, like, help get them over the top. And I'm like, is that supposed to excite me? Like, the Celtics needed a guy that could score the ball. Bringing in another guy that you know, might have scored overseas, but unless he's scoring like 50 points a game, he's scoring like 19 points a game. It's like, give me a guy that can score the ball like 50 overseas, like where you're dominating all these other guys that aren't as good, right? Because there's guys in college that can average whatever, 30s or whatever. Like, do that. Get a guy that can score the ball, not a guy that can do nothing. So, that, that those are my non-football sport things where it's like give me something good do you have anything else um before we get into the college football segment no all right i'm not going to talk about college realignment the, the whole time um we did have two things to bring up off the top i guess this could be nfl related but gary moeller uh michigan's old coach and he coached the detroit lions has died so condolences to his family um i just wanted to bring it up because he finished his nfl career at like what was it like four and three or five and four or something? And he has the best winning percentage of any Lions coach since like the sixties. And they're like, "Nah, we're not going to bring you back." <laughs> this is like <laughs> insane, I guess, because it was back in like the two thousands or whatever. Um, he actually had, a, I think, he had a winning record against the Buckeyes. He was forty four and thirteen at Michigan, and then he got in trouble at an off the field issue, which led to Lloyd Carr and then the national championship. But I was wondering, like, if he didn't have that incident, would Michigan have had a better run? I mean, who can win with the Lions, you know? And why didn't the Lions give him a better, a better shot? That that's my only thing is like, what kind of Lions move is that going to be? Oh, he was four and three. He took over after the other coach resigned and almost took them to the playoffs. So, shout out to him, and. I mean, basically probably got the, the run Michigan going. I mean, he was coach when Desmond Howard was there. And then Lloyd Carr took over and won the Natty. So he built that foundation. Partial Natty. That's a full-time Natty. The, the, <laughs> real, the, the real champs, <laughs> Nebraska. Man, you want to you know something funny? I saw ESPN put out this article about how they were like, well, we're trying to do this realignment thing. But we're only we're only going to focus on AP national champs because that's like our thing because like we are the we are the media and we decide the AP. But then like for ninety seven, they still had it marked as like maybe Nebraska. I'm like, you guys didn't even vote for Nebraska. What, what kind of BS is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> out of all the other ones, the, like none of the other years had it except for ninety seven. I was like, who's pushing this narrative? Like, is it a Nebraska guy that's still mad? Because, like, at that point... I think everyone's mad. They're like, they they couldn't have a better channel. Like, well, we'll give it to two obnoxious fan bases. Well, my only thing is, if I'm looking at it and Nebraska wants to claim that because the coaches pull or whatever, great. Like, okay, cool. I don't care. Like, yeah, everyone knows that, like, you're looking at the AP. That's why, like, with USC in, like, 2003 or whatever, they were the AP national champs. Claim it. Claim it. I just don't see how you can say, hey, we're only going to list AP with national champs, but then you're like, well, we really hate Michigan, so we've got to put an asterisk here. <laughs> and then, like, no one, because then even other ones, like, if you're going to not claim it, why doesn't anyone claim Penn State in 94? <sighs> like, on the other hand, if Nebraska says, like, no, we're the legit national champs because of we decided that we were, even though, like, 
Michigan with Charles Woodson had one of the best defensive players of all time, and their defense was like lights out. So you can't really say that Nebraska could have been running all over them or whatever. So why not 1994? That's my always answer. It's like, okay, well, if you guys are claiming 97, does Penn State get to claim 94? Because I I think Penn State 94 was better than Nebraska 94. Right? Yeah. I don't even know if they had any close games. Like, honestly, I guess there are a couple, Michigan being one of them. But, like, most of their margin of victory was over two scores. That Penn State team in 94. Like, it just so happened to be that the, the Nebraska thing, they play, and they played there. That's why I honestly think that, like, the Big Ten looked at that, and they said, well, let's do a plus one. Penn State wins the Rose Bowl over over Oregon, it happened to be. They do a plus one, then you wouldn't even have to worry about the playoffs. I think that would have actually been a better system, right, than the BCS. I understand how the other conferences kind of went against it because the Big Ten was kind of pushing that the Rose Bowl champ would automatically be in the game. But looking back, I almost wonder, like, how much better would college football be now than if they took it after the bowl game and then they they did a plus one, like throughout the BCS era, right? Because there were a couple years, 03 USC got ripped off. Was it 04 Auburn got ripped off? Um, some of the Big 12 ones, like around, was it 2007 where West Virginia lost to Pitt? Then they killed Georgia. Like, West Virginia yeah. would have been in the plus one, right? And they probably would have won the Natty that year. I, like, honestly, I don't, I, who was it? LSU? Like, that, yeah. that West Virginia team was legit good. They just had one of the worst games against Pitt uh, of all time. And it pretty much de- depleted the Big East enough where it could have blew everything up. And I think if you get rid of that conference thing, we're not even talking about realignment, right? That's what, like I talked about the Texas stuff last week, and I keep hearing about like, oh, if Texas had joined the Pac-12 in 2010, we would be still be, everyone would still be leaving the the Pac-12 right now. I don't think that would be true. I don't think a 16-team Pac-12 that includes Texas and L.A., I don't think they would have had any issue, like with Oklahoma or whatever. Let's say Oklahoma keeps, like they they were their rep for the past 10 years in the playoffs. I think that Pac-12 would have had a rep. I don't think we would have seen any movement out there. And then I think we would have been more set for four power conferences, right? Yeah. Now we're back to conference realignment where now the Big Ten saying like, well, you guys had a chance to be the Southwest and the entire West Coast. Now we have to step in there. And we're getting absurd, absurd rumors, right? Like, there was one come out that SMU has reached out to the ACC. It's like, okay, cool. Like, do you think that SMU is going to get picked from the ACC? Unless all the public schools are leaving and it's becoming like a private school conference, because I know the ACC already has a bunch of private schools, maybe SMU gets picked. But to me, they don't move the needle. And I, have you seen the report about the SEC came back and said that they did the analysis again? No team that they add from the ACC is going to uh, improve their TV money, so they're not going to expand anymore, right? Because I said it last week, and this could very easily change, and I have a reason, but I, I want to get Matt's thoughts on this. They said that, or I told you last week, the ACC has such a low amount of payout ESPN pays ACC, ESPN pays the SEC. It doesn't make sense for the ESPN to look at that and say, hey, we want you guys to add Clemson and Florida State because we want to pay them 50 more or 40 more million dollars a year. It doesn't make any sense. The only reason they do that is if they know that the Big Ten has, has an offer ready to go and they need to lock down the South. Then ESPN might step up and say, well, we need to make sure that we're still winning national championships. We definitely don't want the Big Ten to be able to recruit in every major state, you know? That's it. I mean, that that makes sense. And, you know, as much as I've I've wanted Florida State out of the ACC, and it just – I just had a hard – have a hard time seeing where do they fit 
you know, we're within that alignment because they're they they were so strong during the Bobby Bowden years that nobody nobody wanted to accept them in. Like they had those rivalry games with Florida. They were playing some of the other SEC schools um, in their non conference slate that I don't know that they wanted that extra competitive team in. It wasn't like they're trying to accept someone who just they're going to be able to blow the doors off of week in and week out. So I think like that was that was part of that concern, and that with the rest of the ACC, like yeah, you have you have the most recent last couple years at Clemson contributing, but I mean by by a very large margin, it's Florida State that has has dominated the ACC from conference championships in football down through other sports. They were national champions. Like they, they've held, they've held their own for the conference, but now they're, they're in this catch 22 where they've been successful enough that now where do you fit? Because I don't think the big, I don't think it's, it makes sense for the Big Ten to go. The, the more logical fit is the SEC, but the crap TV deal that they signed, like, why pay more when you can just plug them on your third-rate network for for a fraction of the cost? And that ACC deal, um, they've they've been poking at it. And I had some, I was talking to some people that were in the know last week, and it seemed like there were some ACC rumors where they had talked about a Pac-12 merger, okay? And they talked about, well, what if we expand the ACC? Now, there were rumors that some of the teams pushing for those additions were the teams that are looking to get out of the grant of rights. So, like, if they merge with the Pac-12, do they create a new grant of rights? Does it dissolve the first one, you know? And in the meantime, once that first one's dissolved, can a couple of teams jump to the Big Ten or jump to the SEC, which then might work out in the favor, right? Because I think it it works out for ESPN if the Pac-12 does come in. Now, I did see some things where ESPN said, and it looked like ESPN was kind of leaking it out, where, no, we want the Pac-12 schools to just sign the ACC grant of rights so that it would give ESPN control, which I think the Pac-12, and I I meant to look this up before the show, but I think the Pac-12 TV rights are with Fox, right? I want to say yes. So the Big Big Ten's definitely with Fox, and I know that the Pac-12 is investigating right now. So it looks like the Pac-12 kind of did what the Big Ten did, where they have deals with Fox and ESPN. Basically... ACC is all in on ESPN, which I think is dumb. And I've said so on the show, and I think that's why the ACC is falling apart, right? Because you have no competitor. And you locked yourself in for like till 30, 36 or whatever, 2036. So why are you locking yourself in for that long? And you're getting paid as one of the worst conferences. The Big 12 makes more than you. Well, and that was one of the reasons why I think, like, if you're Florida State, you have to try to explore every avenue to get the hell out because, I, I, for as much as you've talked about it, it just it didn't click to me till I I really started looking at the numbers, and when you realize, like, within the last, within the last however many years, you've had football national championship, you've had softball national championships, basketball, both men's and women's. Have been competitive. Baseball's been, men's baseball's been to Omaha multiple times, and they're doing that without the lucrative TV money and all the 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 millions of extra incentives that come from a conference that you're car- you're literally carrying everything for. So, like with the majority of the money that the conference is making, it's coming directly from Florida State, and that's and the one thing. And well, then you're I, giving a chunk away to Notre Dame because you try to for, <laughs> you try to get them in. Well, that was going to be my other point. Move the needle. Well, well, my first thing is, and sorry to interrupt, but UCLA they admitted that the reason they took the Big Ten is because they were going to go bankrupt. Like they were, have been discussing, hey, we're going to be cutting sports. Now the Cal system has supposedly reached out and kind of said, like, hey, we didn't know about this deal. 
and we might bring up litigation against you, right? So they might be trying to get brought back in by Cal and whatever, because they're part of the same system, I guess, kind of like NC State and UNC. And like you've heard Oregon and Oregon State kind of say like, well, we, our government's going to step in and not let you leave. But UCLA is kind of saying like, look, who are you, is the state going to give us more money to fund these sports? Because you want us to have Olympic sports. We can't afford it. We're losing, trying to be competitive. We have the most prestigious um, academic thing in this in the U, in the Cal system. Do you want the entire system to be left behind, or are you going to let us go? And that's kind of where it's at. Where it's like, what's going to happen whenever these other teams, like these other teams, like they're either going to have to drop sports. Like the SEC doesn't play all the sports, so like I hear, oh, UNC is going to definitely join the SEC, and it's like talking to some people on their side, they're afraid that if they jump to the SEC, they're going to be paying out of pocket for maybe 10 more sports. How are they going to remain competitive for football and basketball in the SEC where the SEC schools are just throwing tons of money that they're making from their TV deal at those two sports where UNC now has to take a chunk of their revenue and pay for 10 extra sports or however many there are. It's not going to be a fair cut, right? So the Big Ten, they're going the opposite direction, saying like, look, we already play all these sports. UCLA and Michigan, you guys have been playing like water polo and whatever other weird sports Michigan's been playing in uh, that they travel out west for. It's like, come here. We'll have teams join you. And now you can get your money back, right? So it makes sense. I mean, I don't know how many people watch them, but that's the one thing with like, bringing apple tv back in like i said last week yes or fox sports is showing frisbee you don't think that they would rather show beach volleyball or some other college sports hell pbs in pennsylvania used to show penn state volleyball all the time i feel like that was the only thing on when i was flipping through channels i'm like oh my gosh how many games does penn state play they play nonstop. <laughs> it's like the Tron thing they do, like just 24 hours of volleyball. And they're like, PBS, you come down. We got some broadcasting for you. Because that has to be easy as hell. You set up one camera, one guy talking to the camera. I mean, some fan would probably do it for free and just to get their name on TV. And then guess what? You have broadcasting for some streaming network. Because Hulu's been showing random sporting events too from college. So uh, the, the Notre Dame thing you did bring up, is actually the last thing that I had to talk about today. So the rumor I heard about Notre Dame is that Notre Dame, their grant of rights is different to the ACC. So while these other schools are looking at ways to kind of change it, maybe by merging with the Pac-12, maybe by bringing in new schools at past a certain point, right? Because I think right now they need at least eight teams to leave is what seems to be the consensus. So if four go to the Big Ten and four go to the SEC, it's over. If two go to the Big Ten and two go to the SEC, and then another four decide they get spooked, like let's say the SEC takes UNC and, and Virginia, like has kind of been rumored, and then Florida State and whatever gets and Clemson get spooked and they go to the Big Twelve because they're like, well, we're definitely not going to stay here now and take even less money. Let's see what happens in the Big Twelve. Guess what? The grant of rights is dead then if they get enough teams to go with them. So the rumors I've heard for Notre Dame. They can play. They can give up their grant of rights for other sports, play in the Big Ten. Some of them, like hockey, they're already kind of in the Big Ten, so I don't know how that works because the ACC doesn't pay for that, so I don't see how the ACC would own that anyway. So, like, Notre Dame could still be on the Big Ten network for sports that they're not playing in the ACC, like hockey, at least to my knowledge. And then they had tried to kind of cut a deal with the Big Ten and said, well, how? what if we did the five-game package we did with the ACC – And we changed that to the Big Ten. And our five games were like Michigan, USC, Michigan State, Purdue, like our rivals, you know, maybe throwing a Penn State to keep us on the East Coast. And Ohio State and Michigan apparently told them like, hell no, what the hell, what are you thinking? Like, we're not giving any special privilege to you. (laughs) Because Notre Dame kind of pitched it like, well, after our grant of rights in 2036, we'll reevaluate and probably join the Big Ten. And if that's the kind of bullshit that they tried, I'm glad that the the big two stepped up. I'm surprised Nebraska didn't step up, but whatever. Nebraska had been complaining about the COVID stuff. You would think that they would tell Notre Dame to kick sand. Because I think getting them in, and hell, USC coming in has to help Nebraska. 
Because now Nebraska can say, like, we're going to probably be in their conference, right? If the Big Ten doesn't expand, they're going to be in the same division as the West schools. There's no way they're going to pull an SEC and say, hey, you guys are in a, in a weird division like Missouri with the East schools. And we're going to call it the South. <laughs> you, like, play Penn State every year. Like, that's not going to happen. So you would think that they're going to be in a in a West division where USC looks at it and they say, oh, my God, we get to play Iowa and we get to play Nebraska and these other teams that we can probably beat the crap out of and then play a championship game against Penn State, Michigan, or Ohio State or Michigan State. Sign us up, right? Sign us up. <laughs> that, I mean, that has to be their thing. And even if – like, let's say the Cal system makes UCLA pull out. What does the Big Ten do? Like, offer Stanford? Like, I, I still think they're going to pull a Pac-12 team out of it. Stanford's a uh, private school. Like, oh, thanks, thanks, Pac-12. Maybe UCLA that's already going bankrupt, they're going to cut all the sports and save your conference? Like, that's not going to work either. I mean, I don't know, but that's what I heard. I don't think that Notre Dame's going to make a decision. They could easily pay their way out. But like I said, it all comes down to Fox. ESPN does not want to give Notre Dame up. I wonder if the rumors are true and Notre Dame's kind of using it as leverage, if the ESPN then pays the ACC more. Will they make as big of a dent? Probably not. And hell, maybe they just pay Notre Dame more. Right? That'd be the easier way. <laughs> like, well, why help I mean, their TV deal's more? out that they can stay independent and renegotiate against NBC. Well, Matt, their NBC deal is so bad. It's like paying them 10 or $15 million a year when the Big Ten schools like Rutgers are making $100 million. How at Notre Dame do you be like, look at that and say, you know what, it's better for us to stay independent? Because they had even pitched it, well, if we make the playoffs, the ACC gives us our cut so we don't have to share with them, so then we can maybe make it back if we make the national championship game. They don't even make this close to the same money. Like If they make the playoffs, what does it pay out, like $20 million, $30 million? That's only getting under like seventy five million in the best year where they make the natty, and they're still lo- ma- losing by twenty five million to Rutgers, and Indiana and Purdue. Like at some point with the NIL stuff, it's going to catch up to them. That I mean, some schools like Michigan and Florida have apparently been waiting. Uh, did you see this stuff? So recruiting's been so bad for Michigan lately because they've been apparently telling recruits like we're not prob- promising you money up front. And Florida's been doing the same thing. And uh, I saw an article written by a Florida guy where they, they said, like, in the long run, players are starting to come around because if you look at the deal Addison signed at USC, apparently he got out there and the guy that promised him the money did not pay him. That's the rumor. Yeah. Did you hear that? Yeah, because I saw that he was unhappy with how the payouts have been. And I, I saw another, like, the I don't know if it was The Athletic or one of the other, like, sports things, but they did a poll of players, and most players that were promised NIL money have not received anything yet. Because, like I said before, they're dropping bags in public. They're not going to pay you if you don't play. Like, look at the Quinn Ewers guy that fleeced Ohio State with that car dealership. Do you think that they're going to kind of, I mean, I... The recruit played nice. Remember, they did that video of him throwing the keys back as he left for Texas. Do you think that company got their money's worth? (laughs) (laughs) They have people driving up from Texas now to pay for cars there? Like, no. You get burnt once or twice. They're not going to be paying for those recruits. I think that's why a lot of schools like Ohio State are doing like a collective. But then even those are supposedly against NCAA regulation. So we'll see if it kind of comes back. But... That's the one thing that I'm looking at, and um, that's all I had. I know we're at time. I, you wanted to talk about Florida State recruiting. So what do you think they've been doing, and how's it been working for them? Well, it's the highest of highs and the lowest of lows for them because on one hand, you have – I think they've signed the, – there was another two <laughs> offensive linemen that they signed. So I think like they probably have every single lineman in the upcoming class signed to their class while – on the flip side, their their high highly ranked quarterback Chris Parson, uh, elite elite eleven quarterback, has decommitted because they were trying to recruit other quarterbacks. And like the crazy thing was, his dad went on one of the 
Florida State podcast and was like saying Florida State shouldn't be recruiting other quarterbacks while his son's there. And it's like, you should recruit everything all the time and don't just isolate themselves because you look a couple years ago when Sam Howell was being recruited to Florida State, all it took was the announcement that they weren't keeping Kendall Browse on staff. They they were trying to stay true to how, and then he was like at the last minute, nah, I'm out. I'm going to UNC. And they were left with no quarterback in that cycle, which really burned them because they were they had such a dry run on on the quarterback. So, I, I mean, on one hand, I, like any more, I think stuff that used to have me a little bit concerned as far as the recruiting, I don't think has because – with the transfer portal being as active as what it is, it's not you're not getting the glamour of oh you're this guy's transferring in and like it, it doesn't seem to have like that same effect as when you see these like oh he's a five star guy he's a four star guy immediately coming in because a lot of these lower lower star ranked players you know I, I think they're able to come in and when you look at like. The, the both defensive ends got drafted from Florida State this past draft, and they were transfer portal guys that came in. That I think if you can establish, hey, you can you can transfer in here, and you can see the field immediately, and that you're going to be able to to produce enough to to get yourself drafted. I think that's that's going to be a, a higher thing for future recruits is, is they're looking on where to go. They're they're going to probably see what the nil money is up front and if they're not getting that guaranteed money then it starts to be well how can i up my stock to get myself into the league and that's going to be the teams that can prove consistently that they can produce players getting drafted and having those paydays in the nfl you know that's going to be where where they're going to really make a a a hit i'm kind of in the same boat because like you see michigan and like i had brought up them in florida have been speaking out against like some of the NIL process, but they just won the Big Ten for the first time in a while. If Har- Harbaugh has a stacked quarterback room, of course they're losing five-star quarterbacks. They want to come in and play right away, right? Like Notre Dame's weak part this year is they don't have a qu- known quarterback. Like they, they predicted them at six wins, Matt, Vegas. Did you see that? So it's no. like, yeah, they had Notre Dame so low because and they have a lot of returning guys. And it explicitly stated that their quarterback, when he played in the games, didn't look good. And they have no one coming in. So they stole um, Lloyd Carr's grandson, I think, from Michigan. But it's like Michigan has J.J. um, on the bench right now. You can't have multiple five-star guys on the bench, right? Harbaugh either has to play him or, like, that's what people don't know. And even with the NIL stuff, now people are saying that uh, there was a story that came out that got taken down because it was unverified that he might have already reached $2 million in NIL deals to be the backup quarterback at Michigan. Can you believe that? People talk about having the backup quarterback job in the NFL as an easy gig. What about college? <laughs> you get paid to earn your degree, and then you might not even have to play. He could literally just take that and just declare for the NFL draft. I mean, I guess he might not get drafted high. And I don't think people would really do that. But, I mean, it's not like if he's actually making that much money and it doesn't work out for him, like, great, you know? Like, at that point, why not take a crack at trying to become a first-round pick by playing another year and staying at Michigan? Because I've heard, well, people might be tempted of NIL offers at other schools. It's like, it's going to take one or two cycles, but there are rumors that A&M was one of the schools that hasn't been paying out NIL deals. And that's why their recruiting hasn't been as good this year. Because remember how they had that number one class? All it takes is one guy not getting paid to go to these other recruits and be like, yo, I wouldn't come here. (laughs) Like, I'm living proof, man. Five-star guy. And and you're right with the transfers. Those guys are going to start transferring elsewhere. And where it hurt, like Florida and Michigan in the past, like some of the schools that have like more of an academic reputation, like oh, well, not all your credits might transfer or whatever. Guess what? It doesn't matter if these guys are trying to get the NFL. They don't even care if they graduate. Because a lot of scholarships now, they can come back in and take classes for free anyway. I think that's how a lot of scholarships are built. So um, we'll be keeping an eye on that with conference realignments and stuff too. How how many of these things are going to be like 
if you're able to get so much TV money and the schools are putting it back into extra scholarship funds and things like that, because I remember one of the articles came out, like, I don't think Michigan was even doing that yet, but if they keep getting all this extra money, I guarantee that they'll be doing that and they will be using that as a recruiting tool to say, like, look, you're going to get the extra scholarship money. You're going to get this. We're going to get you some NIL deals. Here, here are some of the ones that are kind of locked in. It's still new where I don't think they can kind of point that out yet and say, like, this is what we've had. You know, we just won the Big Ten. If you win the Big Ten, this is what you can get. So you come here, work hard, and win. And I think that's a better selling point than, hey, you're a young kid. Let's pay you all this money and see if you get here and actually want to compete then. Because I feel like if you're throwing out $9 million for a quarterback – and he's not playing like how are you not going to have that inner locker room like beef right well and i think that's where you had some and of that's the, more of a miami thing as i'm pointing but the, out. but the but the, the tail end of uh ohio state when urban meyer was there he had that locker room full of quarterbacks and they were the guys were transferring out you know joe burrow leaves the short quarterback goes to miami like they had they had a bunch Tate. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and and that's another thing too, where it's like Ohio State's bringing all these guys in, and like I had said, a lot of focus on the offense. I I know since um, recently they've been getting a lot of defensive guys signing up now, so their class is looking more balanced. And um, I think that they, I think I saw a prediction where they had Michigan as like the fourth most talented team, but they said that based on the talent, like there was such a gap between the top three at Alabama, Ohio State, and Georgia. The gap from them to Michigan is the same as Michigan to like the twentieth ranked team. So, like for someone to be able to make the playoffs and then compete, because like basically Michigan has to beat Ohio State, which is one of the top three schools, and then like last year they would have had to beat the other two in a row, right? I mean, I guess the Iowa game was squeezed in there, but you would have had in four weeks you would have had or four games you would have had to beat the top three talented teams. It's almost impossible, right? Like that would be like in the NFL, like, Hey, can you be like Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes and like Aaron Rodgers? all like in four weeks in a row, like you're probably not going to do that. So like, okay. Now if Michigan can't do it and, and they're like the fourth most talented team, like who's going to be able to do that? Right. Is Cincinnati going to be able to do it? Hell no. But maybe they don't have to beat three in a row if they come from a different conference. And if the SEC only gets one team in, if Michigan takes care of Ohio State again, SEC throws either Alabama or Georgia in, or hell, even getting lucky and neither of them make it because LSU makes a run or something, then I think we can start to see more teams jump up. Because like, is A&M going to be able to steal a spot? They're talented because of that last recruiting class, maybe not as talented over time because it was only one so far. How is that going to help? But we'll be keeping an eye on this. Um, I honestly don't think there's going to be any more realignment stuff for a while. Maybe I'm speaking it into existence by saying that. Um, But I just don't see until Notre Dame makes a decision. And if they get out and try to fight the grant of rights with the ACC, I think that would kind of give a blueprint. The other thing would have been a Pac-12 merger. I guess the Pac-12 have kind of said that they might be looking to backfill um, to try to get to 16 teams or something so that they're not left behind. But I think that one of those conferences are going to have to think bigger if they want to compete with the Big Ten and the SEC. They need to almost become a 24-team conference first, or hell, even 32. And if they like, if the Pac-12 had joined with the ACC and they became a nationwide conference, because they, they, they have a hell of a lot of academic schools in that conference then, right? They lost LA, but they would have San Francisco with Cal and, and Stanford, and they would have had Oregon in them. And if they could have grabbed a couple of other schools like SMU in, in, in Texas or whatever, they could have had the first really nationwide with national brands conference. They might not have gotten them the money right away, but they might have been able to renegotiate and become the third, the third highest paid, right? And maybe that's what they need to do. I don't, I don't see why that conference doesn't break the deal up with ESPN and then say, hey, CBS, what are you guys showing now? Because we have UNC and Duke in this conference, you know, and we know how you love basketball, right? 
That's what I would Fair do. Enough. But that's all I have. Do you have anything for the final bell? No, I do not. I think we pretty much covered everything this week. So yeah, we were all check over the board. Check out southboundsports.com. Yep, go to southboundsports.com, and we'll see you next week.